I welcome you to the talk by Alan Law team on retinal vein occlusion disorders. The image that you are seeing on the screen is the image of a fluorescein angiogram taken in a patient with vein occlusion. If you see this dark area that is the area of non-perfusion due to the vein occlusion. The first image that uh, you are seeing on the screen is the OCT, the optical coherence tomography of a patient with vein occlusion and having macular edema. This is the scan in the macular area. If you look at these white dots, these are the exudates and this is a little bit of subretinal fluid and these black areas are suggestive of intraretinal fluid due to the macular edema. The second image is a multicolor image and this shows these white areas which are cotinal spots and some retinal hemorrhages. There are some exudates in the macular area along with some hemorrhages. If you see this, this is along the distribution of a particular vein, that's why it is uh, a suprotemporal branch retinal vein occlusion with macular edema. These are the images of the fluorescein angiogram showing the area of capillary non-perfusion in the same patient. You can see the blood circulation is absent in this area and in the late stages you can see the staining of the blood vessels. This fluorescein angiogram shows a very poor retinal circulation in the area of blockage and this is at risk of developing complications which we will be discussing later. Let us try to understand few things about the retinal vein occlusion like what is retinal vein occlusion, what are the types, what are the risk factors, how it presents, how to manage, what are the complications that can happen and what treatment options we have for these patients. In simple terms, a retinal vein occlusion is the occlusion of either the central retinal vein or the branch retinal vein. Sometimes it can be hemiretinal vein occlusion where half of the retinal venous circulation is affected. When the entire retinal circulation is affected then it is a central retinal vein occlusion. As I mentioned earlier the vein occlusion can be either CRVO that is central retinal vein occlusion or BRVO branch retinal vein occlusion or hemiretinal vein occlusion. It is important to classify these into ischemic or non-ischemic which have prognostic significance. Ischemic means where the circulation is very poor and they are at risk of developing complications. The most common risk factors for development of vein occlusion are elderly patient, diabetic, hypertensive, patients with hyperlipidemia or smokers. It is very important to check for the risk factors like hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia in all the patients with vein occlusion as there is 10% risk of this happening in other eye and this can lead to bilateral blindness. Sometimes you can have vein occlusion in younger patients. If patient is younger than 50 years, look for other risk factors for vein occlusion like hyperviscosity syndromes, inflammatory disorders like systemic lupus, hypercoagulable states like protein C, protein S or antithrombin 3 deficiency. Obesity is again a common risk factor for developing vein occlusions in young patients. Use of oral contraceptive pills is also one of the risk factor for development of vein occlusions. How do patients of vein occlusion present to us? These patients can be totally asymptomatic. 
they can present with gradual painless blurring of vision due to macular edema if there is a severe vein occlusion then sometimes they notice a sudden loss of vision as well the patients can present with painful loss of vision if they develop secondary glaucoma due to rebiosis which we will discuss later sometimes patients can present with floaters or seeing some black shadows or spider like structures in their field of vision which can be due to vitreous hemorrhage from the neovascularization developing as a complication from vein occlusion when we examine these patients there can be rubiosis which is new blood vessels on the iris the colored part of the eye this is common if uh, it is an ischemic vein occlusion there can be relative afferent papillary defect which is RAPD again seen if it is an ischemic vein occlusion intraocular pressures can be high if patient develops glaucoma cornea can be hazy if there is corneal edema due to high intraocular pressure gonioscopy which is assessment of angle of the anterior chamber may show new vessels in the angles which is new vascularization at the angle suggestive of development of rubiotic glaucoma when you examine the fundus of the patients you can see multiple retinal hemorrhages on all the four quadrants in case of central vein occlusion or in a particular quadrant like in branch retinal vein occlusion in the supratemporal area or inferior temporal area there can be cortinal spots which are uh, indicate uh, ischemia of the nerve fiber layer there can be retinal thickening which is seen as an elevation in the macular area on set lamp examination if there is macular edema neovascularization at disc or elsewhere or vitreous hemorrhage can be seen in complicated vein occlusion patients this is a very beautiful multicolor picture showing vein occlusion in the right eye along the superotemporal blood vessels there are few cottonwool spots and retinal hemorrhages there are some exudates as well in the macular area along with some hemorrhage near the fovea this is a multicolor image and is not a uh, fundus picture let us try to look for the reasons for blurring of vision in a patient with vein occlusion the blurring of vision can be due to macular edema which is collection of fluid within the macular area or it can be capillary non perfusion leading to macular ischemia where there may not be edema but there may be damage to the photoreceptor layers vitreous hemorrhage or corneal edema secondary to glaucoma or secondary optic atrophy can be the reasons for blurring of vision sometimes hemorrhage itself in the macular area can cause blurring of vision how to investigate these patients from ophthalmology point of view the OCT scan of the macula will help to assess the macular edema and guide us with the treatment fluorescein angiography will help with assessing the circulation and helps to assess the risk of complications developing for systemic risk factor assessment every patient should have blood pressure full blood count ESR CRP lipid profile and blood sugar should be checked as I said we should try to control the risk factors because there is a risk of this happening in other eye if not treated patients younger than 50 years do need further investigations in the form of blood coagulation profile vasculitis screen and look for infective pathology in selected cases what are the treatment options we have for these patients a patient who develops vein occlusion 
and if there is no macular edema then we can just monitor them every few months at least for two years to look for risk of complications developing if there is macular edema the option is to either treat with anti vegf injections as a first choice like Avastin, Lucentis or Ilea. The second choice is intravitreal steroids like dexamethasone implant. Obviously if there is neovascularization or vitreous hemorrhage then panretinal photocoagulation laser is must to decrease the risk of blindness. Focal laser for macular edema can be tried in some cases. As I have been stressing, the most important thing is to control the risk factors like diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia are very crucial. Lifestyle modifications like ceasing smoking, weight loss exercises are important once a patient develops vein occlusion even if the patient is asymptomatic will need monitoring at least for two years the complications that can develop in patients with vein occlusion include macular edema macular ischemia vitreous hemorrhage rubiotic glaucoma which sometimes can lead to painful blind eye Thanks for watching the presentation and uh, we do appreciate your feedbacks on the presentation. Thank you.